an epidemic. Um, it is if you're paying attention. Trans people have been murdered at an exponential rate. Trans people are murdered every 29 hours. And uh, the trans murder moderating, moderating, That's okay, trans go murder monitoring project has a complete database on the amount of trans people that have been killed around the world. But there are many people whose stories we will never hear. Now th and you're saying that this is because they're targeted because of who they are. This is why they're murdered, not because they're associated with any other criminal activity. There are many socioeconomic factors that can create violence for our communities, and I think it's important to recognize that transphobia, homophobia, racism, and classism impact this in the United States and elsewhere. Thank Just you for your time. One more thing. Does Hillary Clinton speak to you? Does she speak to I your said, Thank you for your time. Okay, all right, all right. What are the issues that you want to talk about? Any, I talk, we talk about all issues here on what News Now. Are you Local or yeah, local. Mean, Phoenix. Yes, yes. Well, you got an also issue? Phoenix. I love Phoenix and stuff. We just want to talk about how the issues are happening here at the Democratic National Convention. And what would one of those be, sir? I mean, we want immigration reform. We want. That's a good know, one for Arizona. Let's talk about that for a second. LGBT issues is a big issue as well. Like as, uh, the, our transgender folk was just talking about and stuff, and talking about what kind of changes we want here in America. What kind of changes we need. Talk to me then about Donald Trump and the rhetoric about immigrants. Donald Trump has been saying a lot of, you know, negative things about immigrants, about Mexicans, about, you know, Latino folks and stuff. And we just want to say that that's a xenophobic kind of um, platform that he's running around and stuff. We're not sure if he's going to reach out to the Latino vote, which is essential for him to get votes. Uh, throughout the United States, whether it's Arizona, whether it's California, which is where I'm from, whether it's Florida, whether it's all these all these other uh, places, and it's very important for him to outreach to us, to outreach our messages. And if he's not doing that, then he's ultimately are not going to be able to get the election. Are you a delegate? I'm not a delegate, sir, but I'm here representing the community. I'm here representing that there are changes in the country that will benefit us as a community, okay. as immigrants, as undocumented folks, as uh, what we're seeing. Are you a dreamer? I am a dreamer. I came here when I was six years old. I came to this country. I went to the University of California, and I was uh, able to be here at this convention to how voice did, our opinions. How did you get into the country originally when you were six I years came old? to this country as any, any, any other folks, as you know, as white folks also came in. They were able to come into this country uh, because... I mean, did you walk, walk across the no, desert, sir, drive I, in? No, sir. I came in just like any other folks came in, just like, uh, you know, white folks and all the other folks well, no, came I was in. born in San Mateo in California. So how, how, but how your did relatives, you... I'm sure, we came from Europe and came from other Yeah, I'm just right? asking, just, I'm just curious about how you came to America when you were six years old. Uh, I came to this country just like all of no, us. No, no, I'm asking you specifically, how did you come into I the came, country? I came like other folks did and stuff. The thing is that the policies that were created in America um, have been created. That I think have people would find your, hold on, hold on, slow Mexican down, hold, slow down. I think people would find your story interesting. We yeah, hear these stories yeah. from dreamers all the time, talking yeah. about their parents bringing them across the desert when they were six years old yes, or seven years old. Yes, sir. I'm not I trying to confront Arizona. you about that. I'm I just asking Arizona. your I story. Phoenix, Tucson. I have family members that live there. I have folks that have been there for a long time. The thing is that the system is really not set up for folks of color, for Mexicans, for Mexican-Americans and stuff. Now, wait a minute. Let me stop you there for a second. I'm going to yes. play devil's advocate. Yes, sir. You went to university in California. The university one of California. Berkeley? Uh, no, I went to the University of California, Davis. I did get into UC Berkeley. Uh, I was unfortunately not able to go because I wasn't able listen, to. Listen, I mean, anybody. I also got into UCLA and other places. There you other go. You stuff. are, you have achieved. You have achieved. That the country yeah, has not green. stopped Everybody you. The you country has not stopped you from doing that, right? I mean, you you're in the upper five percent of the country I if you if you went to a very the privileged position. Exactly. But what I want to voice is that um, it's the, what is happening is that uh, folks are not letting people come into the country in a legal way, and that's very unfortunate because how the system is set up is not letting folks that are coming from Mexico and from other Latin American countries to get into the country from 1965 um, on. So and you're here, and you went to college. I'm here, here. I'm here and I, w I came here illegally because there's no way of us coming forward uh, into the country in an illegal way, and that needs to change. And that's right. why we're okay. here. Okay, so we're talking comprehensive immigration. Reform. We want to pass immigration comprehensive reform. If Hillary Clinton passed to pass that, if Donald Trump, are you wants confident to pass that, that she'll do that? 
We want to pass that, and we've been working on it for many years. We also work on DACA and DAPA. Right. We have some other dreamers here. Uh, uh, this is Yahaira Sabera. Hi there, how are you? Also well, from I'm New York City. Because um, I'm seeing another Clinton in power, right? So we hope that this time around, this Clinton at least takes away the 1996 um, laws, uh, the IRA IRA laws, the criminal um, laws, the criminalization of, of, uh, of immigrants as well as people of colors. We want to see all of that reverse. If you're really with us, end it. Fix what your husband left in power. You know, you're talking about Trump and him building a wall, but. Your husband did a lot of things that affected the community of color. You're, so you're a DACA kid also. You're a deferred action. We're DACA parents. Yeah. Yes, I am undocumented. And we work. And I am also years. a business owner. No, isn't it, I mean, you've got to admit the climate has changed to where you can pronounce that on live on television with no fear of deportation. You can say, "Hey, look, I'm undocumented." And right now, with the Obama administration, they will not deport you. You don't have any fear of being deported right now. Obama has um, has deported more people more undocumented people than any president ever in history. So the reason why I am saying that I am undocumented is because I feel like I'm in all my rights. I've lived by the law, I've gone to school, I've worked, I've provided um, jobs for, for this economy.